He's Bruce the Blog. And he's the one and only Bazo at work. And you're watching Bruce the Blog Goes Bazo. Thanks for joining us again. This week on Bruce the Blog Goes Bazo, or as we like to call it, BTBGB, uh, we're starting a, a new segment that will just intersperse throughout the show. It's Salute of the Week and Salvo of the Week. First, we're going to do the Salute, no, first we're going to do the Salvo of the Week, and later on in the show, we'll do the Salute. And this week, the Salvo goes to m municipalities like the city of Peekskill, which uh, I'm afraid to say, uh, contacted our company this week with a sort of strange request and the way that it was done is why I'm issuing the Salvo to Peekskill. Uh, our company has orange boxes that we have in, in Peekskill and other areas to distribute newspapers. Uh, of course we went through all the proper channels, all the, all the usual red tape to make sure that the boxes conform to city ordinances and codes and policies about six months ago and they knew what the boxes looked like, they had photos, they had everything they requested, and they approved the boxes. And then we get a call this week from somebody who only identified themselves by name, city of Peekskill, not what department the person was from, not what authorization uh, this person was calling us on, not citing any ordinances, and said that the boxes could not be orange, they had to be painted. Why? We don't know why, because the ordinance doesn't even specify what color it has to be. And so this is one of the issues I've always had with the municipalities is uh, when it comes to architecture review boards and, and things like uh, planning boards, it sounds like by their own behavior that they just make it up as they go along. And when this happens, I always say to people, ask them to show you in writing where it says what they're telling you because you know something? It's not good enough that a city worker is saying you have to change it. Don't accept that. And so we're going to change the colors because we're not looking to make trouble. But we're a business, like, any, like a lot of other businesses, and cities and municipalities should treat businesses a little better. And that brings us to our guest this week. We're, Andy and I are really uh, pleased to have with us somebody that I'm proud to call a friend. And, and this is somebody who easily can be described by those words, mover and shaker. And that is Joe Visconti, who is president of the uh, Yorktown Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Joe. Welcome. Thanks for being Welcome, with us. Welcome, Joe. Yeah. I'm and, thinking and, that uh, person in Peaks will probably hates Halloween. Um, yeah, you're probably right, Andy. Um, but <laughs> I know they, they put a little scare into us. Uh, not really. But uh, one of the things I want to say about Joe is I used to be uh, on, on the board of the Chamber of Commerce. And the, he's done a lot of great things for the town of Yorktown and for the Chamber. One of the most famous ones, of course, is the Street Festival, Joe, that you started. It's going to be its third year, right? Yes. On October 9th, 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that, you know, people who know the Chamber and know you know that you were really the, uh, the main force behind making that happen. Now it's become, overnight, the first year it became a, a, a tradition and an institution. Is there anything new that you're planning for this year? Yeah, we're going to change the venue a little bit. Um, you know, we're going, to, we're going to try to make it a little different. Um, try to improve on it, although it was very successful the way it was. But um, we want to get, uh, for instance, we're going to have a, uh, a parade. We're going to get uh -huh. more community involvement. The high schools, different organizations around, uh, around Yorktown and surrounding towns. Um, and we're going to make some other little changes here and there to try to make it uh, even better than it is. Isn't there an old business axiom, though, that you should never fix what works? Uh, yes, that's true. But... Um, we have, it has been a little bit broken, I will say that, and that's what we're going to fix. I remember the first major controversy you had that I applaud you for the way you handled it was when the town said you can't have any political campaigning during that event. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. you remember, tell them what they, you had to you go know to something? get that. I, was, I, I remember being at the town, at the town work session right. when that happened, and uh, you know, I had my vice president with me, uh, Mike Pop, and uh, 
Mike is uh, doesn't hold anything back. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, he's great been guy, he's been known great to pop off. <laughs> That's right, great guy. And uh, but uh, I remember um, him standing behind me, and when that happened, there was a reaction to that. And I sort of went like this and hit him on the knee and says, you know. This is going to blow up in their face. We don't need to do anything right. here. Right. And that's exactly the way we handled it, and that's exactly what happened. And, uh, you know, in, in their defense, it was the first year, and, uh, you know, we all, we all make mistakes, and it was a trial and error, but they really made a boo-boo on that. Yeah, one. but this was consistent with the town, like with their no lawn signs for campaigns. You know, they, they, they want to silence opposing speech. Mm -hmm. Actually, all speech. And then... You get the, the town thinks it had the right to tell you who can buy a booth in well, your right. parade. I mean, I, I know they license you, but it, you, the idea was these people were getting a booth for their stuff, right? That's true. But where they where they crossed the line was when one of the councilmen said to me that if we do political booths, he's going to do everything in his power to shut down the festival. That's when they really crossed, but that's this, when they crossed the line. Right, and right. this is the town, and, though. Yeah, we, yeah, it's the town. I now, you yeah. are the head of the Chamber of Commerce. And who, who was the councilman? You go ahead. I think it was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was Lou Campisi. Lou Campisi. Oh, yes. He really got hot on it that was, one. Right. And, uh, you know, right. I, I, I was, <laughs> I mean, I'm a big yeah, guy, yeah. you know, but I don't like to, you know, confrontation. But this is, but form, this is but, par right. for the town. You're the head of the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching an interview Bruce did with Michael Grace just recently, it's on ncnlocal.com and you just go down to the videos and you'll find it. And the first thing they go into, a developer, a businessman comes Escrow into fees. town, yeah. comes yes. into town, right. and they've got a lawyer with them, or an engineer or whatever, that they've paid for. Then it turns out, and you can explain this more, both of you. Well, but only clarify that, Andy, the business uh, owner coming in does not have an engineer or lawyer with them. This is where we get into the discrepancy and, and yeah, but the they, argument against this practice. Right, well, but don't they still have an advocate for them if it's really complicated? Their yes, advocate they, that they, they pay could, for? They could have their they own. Do. Yes, right, but what I'm saying, but they right, also right. now have to pay. Right, that's what I'm getting. For right. the person that's going to beat them up. I was telling you guys. On, on behalf of the town. Right. I was telling you, know, this is the stick. I was telling about a friend I knew that when his father wanted to hit him, he said, go get me something to beat you with. He'd come back in and give him a stick to beat him with. Why are we having to pay or a developer having to pay for the stick that's going to beat him with? You can, if you don't mind giving the people the more detail of what, what this is about, about paying for your opponent. Right. Well, and, and I think what we're asking Joe to, uh, to elaborate on, because he's in the best position to talk about this from his vantage point as president of the chamber, is how do you feel, Joe, to Andy's specific point, uh, that a town like Yorktown can better treat its businesses. And, you know, Susan Siegel, uh, the supervisor, has announced a business revitalization plan, which I know you're mm -hmm. intimately familiar with. You know, I think you've become like one of the advisors to Susan, as you should be, on business development. So, um, you know, addressing Andy's point as well, how can the town improve its relations to encourage business development with business owners? Well, uh, it's true that she has come out with a um Yorktown revitalization plan, and we're, we're in favor of that, and we're excited about it, and it's long overdue. However, to get back to Andy's point on the developer fees, um, it's, it's really a conflict because um, if Andy wants to build something in town, he's the developer. He brings you in as an engineer and me in as an attorney. So he's got his staff. Right, okay. He's got his team. Yes. What the town is now saying is that another attorney or engineer has to be hired um, by the town, so it's actually the town that's hiring them, and he's going to represent the town in this, in this project. The conflict is that Andy is now paying me and you, but he's also paying the town attorney or engineer for which he's not really the client. Right. That yes. the other team is representing the town. He's probably an adversary. He's, he is an adversary. Now, didn't you also say they don't get an invoice, they don't get to choose the well, lawyer, the, and they don't get to choose the fee? That's the other, the other flip side. What a bargain. Is that, is that, well, of <laughs> course. What a bargain. It, you know, the chamber has been against this from the beginning because we always felt it's an open checkbook. Right. And that's just exactly what it's turning out to be. Um, for instance, there have been several projects around town in the last six or nine months where this has come up, and I know one individual, I happened to be at the town board meeting, that got a bill for $23,000, and when he asked for an invoice, 
he was told that he couldn't get it because it was town attorney client privilege. So here he is, <laughs> yeah, here he what? is paying a twenty-three thousand dollar bill for something that he has no say on. Couldn't even get an invoice on it to find out what the attorney actually did for the for the money. Right. And and it's a, it's it's killing business. You know, it's you very hard. Shakespeare was right. It's very hard to be in business today because you know you have taxes. Right. You know, business today is paying. 17, 18 percent over payroll for various taxes. And of course, we have the MTA, the MTA payroll tax, tax yep. which is never going to get repealed. You don't think so? Never. As long as you have Shelley Silver there in New York City, it's never going to well, get as repealed. As you know, uh, State Senator Ball and <coughs> two of his colleagues have introduced a bill to repeal it over the next I few years. Have, you don't think it's going to pass? I've, I've addressed this issue in a future column that will be coming out in the Penny Saver community. This is the phoniness of state government and press releases. And one, and one of the examples I've cited is the MTA. It was a one-house bill. You need two houses sure. to agree it's before camera, it goes to right? the government. <laughs> right. So you by have camera. a, and, the, and this is not just, I'm using this as an example, but this happens all the time. You have a one-house bill, you have the great photo op. We just passed a bill to repeal the MTA tax. Now to the average reader that sees the headline, is, oh good, the MTA tax. They don't read the rest of the story that says, well, it was only passed by the state senate and it's waiting for the assembly's action and everybody knows, like it's you said, it's assembly. not right. Right. gonna happen. But when you consider- But you get a photo op. But you, you get consider a photo what op. time of the year it is and that the election That's is coming right. up and all these guys are standing up there and they're all getting their picture in the paper from your organization and God knows every other one. Right. And, and what they're really doing is getting free election right. publicity. But yes. it's a con yeah. job. Because it doesn't happen after the election. But it's right. a, it's a right. con job. This was the point of the column I'm, I've done. It's a con job on the public with these press releases that we as the press, and me with Basil at work, I reproduce these press releases all the time. I don't edit them. We enable the con Are you job. bragging about it? Or? No, it's that we <laughs> bragging do. that you don't edit them? <laughs> well, because I okay. think if somebody sounds stupid, I shouldn't trade. You know, you give somebody a sh somebody's digging themselves a hole and your hand in the shovel, you don't bail them out. <laughs> it's that simple. And, and by the way, <laughs> folks, this program is unedited, so if we sound stupid, you know, you're going to know it, right? <laughs> but it, 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 it is... Time to educate the people. Yes, you should read the press releases. Yes, you should see what they're thinking. But also understand that most of these are the meaningless and they're right. as phony as the people sending yeah. them. And getting back, oh, getting back to the, um, to the uh, other issue, the development of the, the taxes, the MTA tax. We have a tree ordinance now, developer fees. I mean, they're piling the stuff on local businesses that are just hindering. Right business in, in not only this town, all the across the country. And you know, when things get bad, make it easier for business to do business. Yes. One right. quick question before I know what you're right. going right. to say. I said last week, nobody's removing the hoops. They're talking about making business friendly, but nobody's removing the hoops. Susan Siegel's revitalization plan doesn't remove any hoops. She's codifying what exists. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the Bazo's talking about the hoops that people have to jump through to get Approvals. a business plan approved. But you right. said I was wrong. Would you tell me where I was wrong? You, I didn't say you were wrong. I just I said that I, the way I see it. And remember, the Chamber of Commerce doesn't endorse no, counties. No, but we you, endorse issues. Right, but you in were more informed on this than me. The, in this particular is, instance, I haven't heard anything from the candidates except from Michael Grace on Bruce's interview that his opinion was that the developer fees should be removed and another town attorney should be hired. And I can remember years ago when they had three town attorneys, a lot less lawsuits, things ran smoother, it was a much better process. But this is what we have now and until we have a change in the administration, somebody that's going to lead this town into an easier way for, for, for business to do business. You're right, it's not going to change. I mean, there is nobody right, removing right. the So homes. then people should be watching this interview with Michael Grace on NCN Local. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very, it is, it's very revealing. I mean, uh, Joe, I wanted to, to quickly uh, ask you if you can comment at all. You know, we hear rumors uh, all the time about a lot of things, but some of the more uh, provocative ones in a positive sense uh, for people who support business development in, in this region uh, is that um, such national chains like uh, International House of Pancakes, IHOP, and uh, Lowe's, the home improvement chain, and Costco have looked seriously at coming into Yorktown and, you know, have scoped out sites and 
I mean, is there anything happening with any of those or any other major retailers? Yeah, well, Costco has has a full blown plant right now. They're they're working their way through New York State and uh, and uh, Yorktown. Um, there is an issue, as you know, between the partners about selling it property because it has a gas station on it, which by the way, it's been a gas station ever since I can remember. Right. So I don't think that, you know, that the issue was valid there. I think they'll overcome that. Costco will go forward. I think they're on schedule to break around in 2012. Right. Um, as far as IHOP goes, I can tell you that they are looking at a lease in town. Leases Lose? haven't been signed. Loses. IHOP. Oh, IHOP. Sorry. IHOP is IHOP. looking okay. at, a, at a spot in town. Is um, that on Route but, 6? Is that... It's in Yorktown, okay. and, and you know, I don't want to speculate. Leases okay. haven't been signed yet, so. Alrighty. Um, and of course, I know that Lowe's is also looking at a place in town, um, but they want the developer to move a little more forward in the process, which he is with his application. So, so none of those deals are dead. I mean, no, they're in no, progress. No, as a matter of fact, there's also somebody that's uh, very interested in the um, <clears throat> food emporium. Oh, okay, great. And but AMP again is in bankruptcy uh, and it has to right. has to get past that. And right. So there are several developments, big the big commercial interests, looking to come to Yorktown, <clears throat> but they have to have a little cooperation. That's what right. I was just want right. to get to. You telling me that leases want to get signed all this? Right. But now they sign a lease, so they move forward. Right. Next thing you know, the town comes in and says. Wait a second. Uh, we got a you know a, there's a gas like you said the gas station that's been there a hundred <clears> years. All of a sudden now a gas station is well. An what, issue. We're, what we're doing to wasn't, remedy that? Wasn't there one business that wanted a Pizza Hut that was denied because their roof was red in Yorktown? Well, Lawrence? that was Linda Cooper's administration. No, I understand, but you're right. But you have people right. still on the board that go back that far. But what we're doing now, what the Chamber of Commerce doing now is we have what we formed as a business development committee. As a matter of fact, I could tell you that Mohegan Lake Motors. Is, is putting in an application to build a new showroom where the old Bella Vita is, used to be. Yes. And we have a meeting with uh, everybody on uh, July 14th at the chamber office okay. with the town is coming with their entourage right. and Mr. Ross is coming and That's the business Barry development. Russ, Barry Russ who owns Mohegan Motors. Right. The yeah. business development committee is going to be there and we're going to get everybody in the room at one time. And we're going to look at the plan and they're going to tell us what they need when so that we can move through the process very smoothly. Right. As a matter of fact, this was done years ago when Tony Grasso was a councilman and they put up Toys R Us. Right. And the whole thing went very smoothly because that was the process that they used. We're right. going to try to reintroduce that and try to help these companies get to Yorktown. But as right. long okay. as you have right. the current people that have been obstacles to business, how is this going to happen? You know, it's the chamber has that since I've been president three years, the chamber's been introduced introduced in this area, business, business, business. For some reason, the whole country's on board now. Okay, the problem is you cannot sustain the Yorktown tax base without more business. The homeowners are getting yeah, killed. Absolutely. All right, and unless you bring in more business, Costco is worth two million dollars a year right. to the town of Yorktown. The 202 corridor, if it's developed correctly, and that's not going to hurt any residents or any density or anything like that, is worth three or four million dollars a year. So I'm going to leave you with this question. What shape would the town board be in now if 202 was redeveloped and there was another three or four million dollars coming into the town every year? In tax no, so absolutely. does the yeah. Chamber of Commerce get people to get involved to pay attention to this stuff? You can't yes. endorse, but you can get people to be more absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, informed. Absolutely. And, that, and, and what the Chamber of Commerce does yeah. is for the benefit of Yorktown. It's a nonprofit organization. We don't make money on this stuff. It's for the benefit of our community. The community right. belongs to all of us. People right. bring people, business bring people. It's a giant right. chain in that respect. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and, and by the way, for all the people watching this, if you're a business owner and you don't belong to the Yorktown Chamber, you need to join. <laughs> I mean, you see, you see how dynamic Joe is and he's doing a lot of great things for Yorktown and businesses. In fact, Joe, talking, uh, you know, just in closing up this segment, in um, talking about the winds of change, so to speak, uh, you know, I know and we know that you sort of tested the political waters yourself this year on the Republican side. Um, I, uh, do you have any further political aspirations? Or? Not at this time. No. My, my, my aspirations are for the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I love the Chamber, I love the community, I love business, I love the people that are members, and uh, that's I'm going to be advocating through the Chamber for the town of Yorktown. Right. 
And, and we also want to make sure that, you know, before uh, we leave Joe or he leaves us or both, that, uh, you know, what demonstrating Joe's commitment to the community is that uh, he recently uh, was honored by the Yorktown Lions on the occasion of their 50th anniversary, their Jubilee dinner that they recently held. And Joe uh, very deservedly received what's called the Richard Uplinger Award, which uh, is given to somebody who shows uh, great service to the community. So, Joe, we just want to congratulate you on that. That's Thank great. You. Yeah. And Thank thanks you. a lot for joining us. Okay. Jeff, right? Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, last week we talked about how Penny Saver Community, the chain of local newspapers uh, that I'm affiliated with, uh, is not going to be endorsing candidates. And one thing I wanted to add to that, by the way, this week, is that this is, this is what our theme is for this election year. And the theme is vote for the best. And what does that mean? That means vote, first of all. Just vote for somebody. Uh, and vote for the best, which is our uh, patented slogan, you might say, means that we all hope for the best for the quality of life in the communities where we reside and the people who represent us as elected officials. And so you should just vote for the person on an informed basis, find out everything you need to know about the candidates. And our endorsement policy is to tell you, vote for the best person who represents your interests. I mean, that's the, I think that's the wisest advice we could give. Um, you may not totally agree, Andy. You may beg to differ a little bit I'm with that. I'm not even going to beg because we, we went to this last week. So the only thing I'm going to say is our question of the week is going to be, is the, the pol this new policy, the Penny Saver Committee, is it correct or incorrect? And email the Penny Saver Community with your opinion on their new policy. But isn't it true that an opinion can't be correct or incorrect? And our opinion is we're not doing endorsements. Well, well when the customer... You, right now, I think I think the customer wants it, and I think your opinion is saying the customer is wrong. No, not oh no, that's no, no. my oh, not own. No. That's no, uh, it's my right. way of looking at it, and I think the only way we're going to find out is find out what the customer thinks. No, I mean our opinion on this topic is that it should not be up to a newspaper uh, or probably any news organization to tell uh, its audience what to think. It could, as, as you've said, you know, we could influence the debate in various ways. But what it comes down to is that a news organization, when it does endorsements, uh, it's done by a, a handful of people. So they can vote for whoever they want to vote for, but uh, why should a handful of people in a news organization be telling a mass audience, um, and we have a mass audience, by the way, now, which is a big difference, why should we tell them who to vote for? People are smart enough and they should figure it out for themselves because that's part of a democracy. Anyhow, let's get on to another topic. I know. I want to discuss now a couple of things that have happened with the state. Okay. Number one, I will, I will say right now as of this taping that the gay marriage thing is not coming to a vote. Right. And even if it does, I don't believe it's going to pass. Okay. And I will tell you right now, there is a, I don't want to deal with the merits of the bill. That's been discussed from both sides. The politics of the bill is what's interesting. The conservative party said to the Republican party, anybody that votes for this bill, we're not going to endorse. Republicans can't really win without the conservative party endorsement. It's, and there's about seven state senators in the last election that proved that point. Right. And that, of course, would tip the control of the state Senate back to the Democrats. Now, you have, so you say this is an issue of conscience. No, this is an issue of survival. The gay voting bloc votes Democrat. It would say, road kill Democrat. The gay voting bloc would vote for the Democrat. So there is no upside for the Republican candidate to lose the conservative backing because they're not going to get any Democrat votes out of this. They're, right. So you, they're, what they're saying is that we want you to sacrifice your political career for this issue. Right. Not happening. Yeah. And okay. that's the politics behind it. Okay. The second thing. You could have jumped in on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Second thing is what did pass, interesting enough, before it cap, you know, the property tax cap, rent control, or what they call the big ugly. Yes. And it is no smoking on train platforms. And what's wrong with that? There is no science on secondhand smoke. None whatsoever. There is no science. No, on it? there isn't. It is. It's like man-made global warming. It is hypothesis piled on top of theory. How, how about this? How about this? Okay, there's no science on secondhand smoke. Says 
my esteemed co-host Bazo. How about common sense on Doesn't secondhand matter. smoke? Doesn't matter. It's still a public platform. There is nothing to what? say that secondhand smoke. There's not one autopsy. Now, it's, one it's, single. It's, it's toxic. There's a lot. There's a lot of things that and can what, hurt. By you. the way, what redeeming value does smoke? Who cares? Have? Freedom is to I protect. Do. Freedom is to protect the unpopular. You don't need freedom to protect the it's popular. Freedom is not to protect the unhealthy. And 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 excuse me. And the, people getting first sick. hand smoking. First hand smoking only kills one third of the people that smoke. Only. That, still uh, only. no no. Still the minority of smokers deaths can be attributed. One third versus two thirds that died from yeah. other causes. Right. Only one third can be attributed to first hand smoke, and we have turned the entire world. If smoking was that guaranteed to kill you, it would be outlawed. It is a political tool. It is a and money by the way, tool. It's about as close to being outlawed as anything can be without being outlawed. But if it. Right? And by the way, let me take a wild guess. Uh, do you smoke? Yes, but has, oh. Oh. so what? What I'm saying is that. You've turned the world upside down because one third of a group of people have died from uh, what, yeah. what has happened. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I, I, I hear you, but, but, but I want to get to some other things. But as far as secondhand okay. smoke goes, there okay. is no science, okay. and now right. they're going to do. They've already done okay. parks. Right. New York City won't even let you smoke on the sidewalk now. This is an intrusive thing. Okay, and I think we should pick up on, on this next week. Um, okay. I mean, I, I, I don't want to end it by saying you're blowing smoke, but we can. Um, you know, continue next week. Uh, I want to make sure that we get this week to our salute of the week because this is this oh. to me is really great. Um, we recently reported on this. We send out our news organization send out sends out mobile news alerts, and um, our sports editor Rob D'Antonio does a great job. So I read, I found out about this on my smartphone myself. Um, I do a lot of different things during the day, so I'm not necessarily aware of when the story originates. Let's say, and even when it's posted on our website. So I'm looking at my smartphone and I see that Jamie Loeb is a 16-year-old uh, woman in Ossining, and we just recently reported that Jamie Loeb is the number one ranked 16 and under tennis player in the country. Let me repeat to that. Let me repeat that for you. She's Jamie Loeb of Ossining is the number one ranked 16 and under tennis player in the United States of America, and whether you follow sports or not, you have to admire and appreciate that we have here in our midst somebody who is the best in the country, which, let's face it, folks, doesn't happen very often. Uh, not only that, but uh, Ms. Loeb has had eight matches this year against 18 and under opponents, and she has beat every one of them. Uh, and I'll just finish this in, in our salute to Jamie Loeb, our salute of the week to Jamie Loeb of Ostang, by saying she's being... Um, Tutored uh, to some extent, we report, by none other than John and Patrick McEnroe. So you know something? I, we wouldn't be surprised to see her uh, as a very successful professional tennis player uh, very soon. And just quickly, uh, Bazo, I want to talk about another segment that we want to introduce called Fun Stuff. You know, the world isn't just about politics as much as we love to talk about it. So coming up uh, July 4th weekend, you might want to check out in Sleepy Hollow, they're having this Pirates of the Hudson uh, it sort of looks like to me, uh, from the description, a mini theme park for families. So, you know, you should check that out. Um, and, and at the Yorktown stage, uh, coming up in, later in July, uh, the last couple of weekends of July, is Little Shop of Horrors, which is a very, very uh, funny, uh, entertaining musical for the whole family. Um, and also in Yorktown, the Lions Club that we mentioned before does a great job over at Jack DeVito Memorial Field of their summer concerts, their outdoor summer concerts, al fresco, as we like to say. And so the next one is July 10th. Um, you know, uh, wouldn't it be nice if you attended the Beach Boys tribute July 10th at Jack uh, DeVito Field? And um, also, let me mention that at the Westchester Broadway Theater, Susical the Musical is playing there uh, through July 30th. And at the Paramount, uh, you might want to check out in August the Marshall Tucker Band. Uh, Marshall Tucker's a great... But anyhow, Bazo, that's it for this week. Uh, any closing words very quickly? Other than the preceding opinions um, uh, have been mine. And the preceding opinion was mine. And, and you, you may, may beg, beg to, to differ. differ. By the way, they're going to allow smoking at the concerts? Well, I'll